first time I'm, I'm saying my new name because we got married recently. So uh, my name is Michelle Yasuda, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the program director for the Foundation for Conscious Living's Big Leap Home online programs, which support individuals, organizations, and communities in generating agency, connection, and creativity on our shared planet. Mm. And so tonight is a really great opportunity for us to play because the basic toss, which we'll be sharing about later, um, is one of Katie Hendricks' most fun and delightful transformational tools, mm -hmm. and well, in my opinion. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the call over to Deb right now, who is our co-host, and, um, and then I'll be back. I want to thank you all for uh, being with us tonight. Thanks so much, Michelle. <laughs> so before we get started, um, we find that learning works best when we bring our curiosity, openness to learning, and appreciation of ourselves and others. We invite you into this commitment for this call. We invite you to see this space as a friendly and safe space where you can lean into your learning edges as far as feels good for you. And now I have the honor to introduce our amazing facilitators tonight. Michelle, I experience you as a quantum shifter. I experience your genius energy of holding open space to invite people into curiosity in ways that are warm, friendly, and also deeply transformational. You move and act with quick efficiency, which facilitates measurable, tangible, positive results. Dean, I experience you as a magnificent pillar of gentle strength, holding enormous loving space for supporting movement and alive energy to flow through yourself and others. You show up as an absolutely consistent provider of support, love, encouragement, and strength in ways that are so nurturing, kind, and playful. Together, you both emanate and model what loving, thriving relationship is to me. And I am so thrilled to learn more of what you guys have to share with us tonight. So with that, mwah, I'm going to hand the call over to you. Let's play. <laughs> Class is uh, over. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Dad. Thank, you. thank yeah. you so much. Mm. This is really yummy, yummy, yummy. So, uh, yeah, so we have um, some, some fun here <laughs> planned. And I want to just introduce myself a little bit more, say a little bit more about who I am. Um, so I consider myself a sassy visionary of wholeness. And what I love to do is dance in the field of infinite possibilities and awaken discovery and transformation. Mm -hmm. And I love to do this with my uh, coaching clients. We work together um, with relationship coaching, uh, working with couples and, and such a delight to, um, to be, it's such an honor really to be a part of people's transformation. So I love doing that. And that's really what I'm all about. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Dean Yasuda and I play in the art of circulation. And I do that through breath work and movement, activating whole body vitality. And I do that through um, coaching with Michelle in a relationship coaching. I do that through my personal, I'm a personal trainer and I do that with my personal training clients. If they're wanting to do a coaching and training, it's very powerful. If not, I can just do personal training. And I also do it through my breath work uh, coaching and uh, teaching people how to breathe, different methods, how to breathe. And when things come up, your emotions will come up as you breathe. And then using the tools to navigate and for self-discovery and learning. So what I like to um, invite everyone to do if you're, if you can, is to stand up, you know, just go ahead and stand up. 
And if you can't, you yeah, can, you can, you can you lie in place where yeah. you are or sit in place where you are. Great. Hmm. So one of the presencing moves is a three part step is turning fully towards. So you're turning fully towards you're opening up your posture. So you're not standing there like this. You're opening up your posture and you're breathing easily. So nice, easy breaths. So what I'm going to do is add in one more of my favorite things to do. And if you're not comfortable doing that, that's fine too. But what I'm going to invite you to do is go ahead and stand on one foot as you're doing all of that. So just comfortably put your foot up in the back here. And if, if balancing is a problem, you can just put your toe down like this. But go ahead and balance on one foot. Open your posture. Breathe easily. Turn fully towards. Ah, and then notice your body. Notice your shoulders. Go ahead and soften your shoulders. Soften your hips. Soften your body. Soften your jaw. Just loosen everything up. And then go ahead and switch your feet. Switch to, switch to the other side. And if you're sitting, open up your posture. Open up your, your, your shoulders. Open up your hips. It's really open your full, your front body here. Open up to receive what's going to be giving today mm. on this call. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> go ahead and switch feet again. Mm. And just notice where you are in your head. Bring yourself down into your foot that you're balancing on. Bring yourself down into your body. Bring yourself into your breath. Mm. Ah, and just bring yourself right here. Right where you are and right where we are. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Go ahead and <sighs> sit down if you like, or you can stay standing. Yeah, whatever. We like to stay standing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so here we are. Here we are. So tell me what what's happening tonight? Mm. What are we doing? What are we doing here? So tonight we're going to be sharing about a tool called the basic toss, which was developed by Katie Hendricks. And the basic toss, I would say um, in, in one sentence about it, is that it's a, way, it's a way to clear the barriers that get in the way of connection. Hmm. Then tell me more about that. Hmm. So one of the things that I notice in relationship is that uh, often what gets in the way is really bad listening <laughs> and power plays. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. That's some bad listening there. <laughs> yes. So um, when we're engaging in the basic toss, we're using the presencing tools of turning towards each other, opening up our posture, breathing easily, mm -hmm and letting go of any listening filters that we might have. So um, if you're not familiar with the idea of listening filters, this is um, one listening filter might be that you already think you have an idea of what this person is saying, and I already know the answer to this, and why are they even talking about this? Because I already know what you're, you know, like, what, you're wasting my time. So there could be a filter of hurry up or a filter of, um, fi fixing, like, oh, I know what you need. If only <laughs> you would do this, then everything would be fine. <laughs> so we all have our listening filters that, um, that, that come up and I'm wondering if oh, you have you. any. Oh, of course I have a listening filter. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, what's Mine your go-to? Don't tell me what to do. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. good rebel. Right? Yeah, that's like, don't tell me what to do. Dean has a very well-established totally rebel, yeah. I would say. Like, so, I like more. him very much, yeah. <laughs> and there I am talking when I don't have yeah. the ball. 
So what I love about the basic toss is that it's a playful version of the talking stick. If, if you're familiar with a talking stick, whoever has the stick is the one who's talking. Otherwise, we're not, right? Well, with the basic toss, there's a, there's a fun element to it. What can be really fun is to use a balloon. And we couldn't find any balloons today. Um, so we're using a ball. So you can use a ball or a balloon. Also tonight, we're gonna be using our imaginations because we're on a Zoom call here together. So you're gonna get an opportunity to play with the basic toss. And when you play with it, you're actually gonna pretend to throw the ball. And we do this all the time with couples where we play the basic toss when we um, are looking at like, what's an issue that's going on for you right now? Or what's a potential? What's something exciting that you're wanting to create in your life right now? And the basic toss is an opportunity for exploring all of that. So before I go on with that, I wanna talk a little bit about what happens when we're in a power play. Mm -hmm. So like I might, I might decide that I really like talking and I'm just gonna do all the talking and I'm not actually gonna leave any room for Dean to do the talking. And you know, I really like this ball and I'm just <laughs> gonna keep it because it's really fun. And all right, fine. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that Katie talks about, Katie Hendricks will talk about, is how you can tell in a meeting who has the power. And how you can tell in a meeting who has the power. Actually, let's see what, um, go ahead and unmute yourself um, if you, if you want to take a guess at like how we know who has the power, who's holding the power. Who leaves first? <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Darlene. <laughs> that was great. Did we stage you? <laughs> so yes, the person who leaves first is calling off the game. And so often in relationship, there's a little bit of that going on. Sometimes it's a little more subtle than in a meeting where you just get up and walk out. In relationship, it might be a kind of starting to flee a little bit. I'm with you, but I'm not really with you. I'm going to hold this in, you know, it's kind of like, I'm going to hold, reserve the right to leave. I'm going to reserve the right. Like if I don't like what you're saying, I'm out. And, and so what the basic toss invites us to do is to actually open up to connection, open up to listening and let go of what we think we know in service of connection. And um, I, I, the thing I think that's been the most exciting for me is when we've played with teens and kids oh, yeah. Yeah. with it. And what um, all of them have said is after playing the basic toss, they're so amazed to feel listened to. And I remember one kid, he was a, a middle schooler, and he actually said it's the first time that he's actually felt fully listened to. And I was, I, it was like... Yeah both heartbreaking and, and heartwarming to know that now he knows what that's like. So, so it's like there's a possibility that got opened up for him that he didn't even know ha existed. Um, so I'm going to just pause for a second and toss the ball to you because I think you had something you wanted to share about the basic toss. I did? Yeah. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of, the, one of the biggest things that I love about the basic toss is that you will say three things, three quite three as sentences. a listener. As a listener, you say three sentences, mm -hmm. and and the sentences are: "Tell me more. What happens?" <laughs> so, <laughs> and then what happens or happened, and what interests you most about that? And that's the only three things that you will say. And these have been time tested by Katie and Gay and they've narrowed it down to these three sentences. And what I can tell you from my experience, how powerful, it's a little, it was a little funny at the first, first time I did it to, to say those, but what I found is how deep it goes. And as a listener, I didn't have to make anything up. I just had to say the word, toss it back and be fully present for that person and hear them what they're trying to express and then i just say something else and yeah it's just such a it's beautiful like beautiful um 
practice. Yeah, I was thinking about how much energy it frees up. Yeah. Um, you know, often if, especially if we're talking about something that's challenging, so we might talk about an issue, we might be talking with someone, and um, this is a great tool to use with your uh, partner, with friends that you have maybe a conflict coming up. And if they're willing to play the game, it's an opportunity to break through the, the normal barriers, like having a fear fate happen in the middle of a conversation. So if you're not familiar with the concept of a fear fate, it's when everything kind of goes a little bit hazy or fuzzy. Most people experience it as a draining of energy and confusion. And so often in conflicts and in conversations, in, in difficult conversations, in, in quotes, we um, experience fear. And what happens with the basic toss is the playfulness of it breaks through some of that fear. But also the fact that when you're listening, you're only going to say these three things. And when you're speaking, you know you have the floor. I've got the ball and I get to express and I get to be listened to. And it's such a gift and it's such a, um, a melting of fear to actually feel listened to. And so I wanna pause here and um, are there any questions um, not about the basic toss, but about what we've been talking about in general, because the basic toss we're going to demonstrate for you. But do you have anything like a burning something that's coming up for you that you want to share or something about listening filters or any of that. So go ahead and and um, raise your hand or you can unmute, unmute yourself. yourself. Anybody have anything they want to share about that. No, we're good. All I'll right. Share. I have a oh, quick. Yeah. Um, noticing that my partner and I just recently had a conversation and we both had one foot out the door like, uh, like we and usually we can't quite face like it's it's definitely a pattern right mm, yeah. right yeah well that and it's so great and that's the thing that the the presencing the invitation to presencing you can actually simply play with that without the words that's another way that you can you can actually clear some space where, hey, let's just presence each other. Let's turn fully towards each other. Let's actually open up our posture and breathe together and simply do that. And then put a pause on the talking. And that can be a, a, a way of actually clearing some space before you get into that conversation, whatever it might be. And, um, and then once you see how the basic toss works, that's a great way to, to jump into it. Yeah, and another thing I love about the basic toss too is as a as the speaker or as a listener in the old the old times when we would have a conversation and Michelle's a much more expressive talker than I am that I will go into a, a, a yeah because she just keeps going ah, on. she yeah. keeps talking and I'm just standing there like yeah yeah and then she'll say and then she'll stop and I'm like yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> like, what oh, did you say? There. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, so being able to toss the ball and play with that way, she she knows she'll have an opportunity to talk more and I'll have the op opportunity to presence myself instead of just kind of fading away because it's like... Nah, 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 There's nah, so nah, many nah. words. <laughs> yeah, that's another way that we play out power is not giving away that ball, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's such a gift to actually, ah, I'm going to pause because I'm, I want to keep this game going. So the basic toss is all about how can we keep the game keep going? Connected, yeah. How can we, yeah, exactly, keep connected, keep the game going. So at this point, what we would love to do is demonstrate how the basic toss can be supportive while you're um, presencing an issue um, so what we want you to, to do is consider right now a recent upset. So you're all going to have an opportunity to go in a breakout room. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to demonstrate. But I want to let everyone just take a moment to think about a recent upset. Mm -hmm. and, and then if there's someone out there who's willing to demonstrate, we would love to play the basic toss with you. So if you're willing to um, 
to demonstrate, raise your hand. You can raise your physical hand or you can raise your electronic hand. And then we we'll had we had Dana's hand raised. I'm not sure if that's because she had a question or whether she's willing to play. She's popped right. it back down. So I'm <laughs> not sure about that. All right, Dana, go ahead and let us know. Hi. 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 Well, I did have a question actually originally. Um, but and you you may be getting to this because what I was gonna ask was sort of how you use this like functionally in your your relationship like if when you need to talk you're like hey can we play the game or like if it's something that you kind of only do as an intentional activity or like um so that was my question yeah that's a that's a really great question i think one of the things i notice about the all of the transformational tools that um that we've learned that i've learned um from the hendrix is putting them into practice is how they're how it actually it's like if i don't practice it it's a tool sitting on the shelf <laughs> and it looks nice it's pretty on the shelf there but i'm not actually using it and what we notice is if we don't actually set aside time to do an activity we're probably not going to do it so if you're in the heat of the moment sometimes that's a time where it's it's really hard to actually do that that take that extra initiation to say hey let's use this tool so if you've been practicing it and it's a regular part like you do this once a week or you do this once a day whatever it is and it becomes a regular practice it's much easier to pull it off the shelf when you need it mm. yeah, especially so, because, like, yeah, yeah. Like i appreciate that because when you don't practice it and then you get in the heat of the moment then it's then it's done you're you're, you're going and that's right. it you know, the game is going <laughs> so practicing it when you're not in some kind of conflict mm. is a great time to practice with your partner. So you can also just know how, know how it goes, you play, and then you're both experienced with it. So then when something, an issue does come up, you're like, hey, let's, let's do the basic toss. Are you willing to do the basic toss? And if you're in agreement, then you, you proceed. So yeah. yeah. And we always feel more comfortable when we've practiced something. So, yeah. And it's always either easier to practice something when we're feeling good so it's a great way tonight what we want to give you all an experience of is how to use the basic toss through issues and and um conflicts and then also how to use it for um a potential for creativity for excitement so there's there's these two major ways that we can use this tool and it's beautiful for both and so helpful for both so dana if you're willing to play the toss, which are you, you sure. game? Okay, great. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna toss an imaginary ball with you and we'll, we can take turns doing yeah, it too. Sure. So sure. Um, so do you have a, a, an, a recent upset or an issue that you're willing to play the toss with? Sure. Great, yeah. okay. All right, so I'm gonna toss you the ball and I'm gonna just say, so uh, tell me what, what is it you'd like to uh, express? So, don't forget to catch the you ball. You missed the ball. You missed the ball. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh, that's that's typical. I was thinking, I was like, oh, good, it's an imaginary ball. That's better for me. But I still right. dropped it. Right, you still dropped the ball. There you go. So I'll do it again. Yeah, there you go. So and then holding it so that you remember that we're playing a game and that we're gonna that you can actually pause, and you don't have to tell the whole story at once. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I'm at home with my whole family. And one of my sisters uh, we is a little bit more difficult to get along with. Um, and we all seem to resort, we get along pretty well, like we're a pretty close family, but we seem to kind of resort back to some childish ways when we're all together. And that a few things have come up around that. Mm. Tell me more. Oh, caught it. Took a while to travel. <laughs> um, it's particularly difficult with me and my older sister. We're also probably the closest, the two of us, um, but we used to fight a lot when we were little. And uh, whenever I feel that I have to always be the bigger person um, and that if I am in a place in my life, like now, for instance, when I don't feel like I have a lot of extra to give, there's always this tension between us that comes up and I feel like she never can meet me where I'm at unless I can meet her at least 
80% of the way. Mm -hmm. And I get not just upset in the situation, but then sometimes I get upset about my own reaction and, um, you know, wanting to be that bigger person all the time and maybe being a little frustrated with myself when, um, you know, I just have to dig my heels in and, and won't apologize. Like, recently, this recent trip, I'm just kind of holding on to my, uh, holding on to my anger. And then what happens? There's a, an awkwardness, this quality that kind of poisons the time that we have together. And it's such a precious time. Um, I recently, moved to Hawaii and she recent or a couple years ago moved to Colorado. So it's, you know, we don't get to have our whole family together all the time. And when we do, I just, you know, I really want to be present and really just want to enjoy it and don't want to waste time fighting. Um, but then sometimes, you know, it's just like, you just, uh, you know what it is, is you just get more fixated on being right than uh, giving the heart what it wants, you know? Um, and then you get mad at yourself for doing that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you for, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't go through all of the questions. And one of the questions you might have about this is, um, do you have to do them in order? How many times do you do them? And actually the invitation is to use them in any order you would like. Um, I often will start with tell me more um, and then and it's really up to you. Those are the three questions or the, the three questions that you're going to ask and you feel into it. You feel into which one is going to be most supportive to the person and um, stick to the so, script <laughs> and stick to the script. Exactly. You're going to be tempted. Right. So you might be tempted to want to like, oh, I want to I just want to share something that'll help you with your sister, right? Like I, I can have that rising up. And so one of the tools that is super helpful is checking in with yourself, presencing yourself while you're presencing someone else. So Katie Hendricks calls this the loop of awareness. So you're going to bring your awareness out to the person in front of you, but you're also going to bring your awareness back to yourself to check in with what's happening inside of me. So you might have all been experiencing um, thoughts, feelings while you were listening to Dana. And so whatever those thoughts and feelings were that you maybe had, were experiencing just from watching, you can be noticing that without completely losing connection with your partner, with in this case, Dana, right? Where bring the attention out, bring the attention back in. Now, as the speaker, this is also where you want to be checking in with yourself. Am I holding the ball too long? Am I going on? Am I thinking that I need to get all of the information in? Or am I actually pacing myself? Am I in my essence pace? My pace that feels good in my body? Or am I feeling a little bit rushed? Or am I feeling a little bit sluggish? So you want to be noticing that and seeing how you feel. So it's a, there's a lot of factors that go into this and keep it easy and friendly. And this is the thing about the basic toss that's wonderful is the more you play it, the, the more expanded your experience will become with it. So I would that really cool. love, yeah, to give you an experience of this. So we're gonna break into breakout rooms. And so if you're, uh, like Deb was saying, if you're not going to participate, just don't press the button that invites you into a room. It's totally fine. We'll, mix, we'll, we'll make sure that everybody has a partner, but it's easier if you just stay in the main room when you get that invitation rather than get put into the room because it's hard for us to know if it's not working out unless, unless you tell us. So the other side of this is if you get moved into a room and a person's not participating with you, so someone might be on the phone, they might not be on screen, so if, if you're having any issues where it's not working out, go ahead and leave the room and come back. Let them know that you're going to be leaving the room and then come back into the main room and you'll either play the basic toss with Dean and I, or we'll move you into another room. So we want you all to have a good experience. Yeah. If you're not having a good experience, please come back into the main room and we'll, we'll have an experience together. 
So any questions before we send you into your breakout rooms? We'll let you know about the timing. Michelle, there is a question from Deborah. All right, great. Deborah? Yes, I'm, I'm wondering how this ends. Is it when the speaker feels complete? I mean, no, we're, we're doing a timed exercise, but in real life, is it just whenever the speaker feels complete? And well, is there, oh, go ahead, yeah. And is there no feedback at all? I mean, is it just listening? Yeah, yeah. So the idea of the basic toss is that there is no feedback, that this is an opportunity for um, expressing and being listened to and listening and um, having that be the full expression, like that's enough. And, um, and that's a really unique experience. It's something that we often do not experience. And so if you're, let's say you're working out an issue with a partner, if you're going to use the basic toss, it's really a way to clear energy and create space. And then you might decide, okay, we're going to, we're going to then schedule a time to have a conversation about it where we're going to ask for feedback. We're going to work through this issue. But what I notice is that through the act of expressing and through the joy of being listened to, a lot of issues can get um, softened and some of them are just resolved just through being feeling heard. So there's a, a space that opens up. And um, so you can and experiment also, with yeah. that. Yeah. And also what I've experienced too is that it's going to have a natural arc of completion when you do it because you express, you express, you feel heard. And then there's just going to be a good feeling of like, oh, you heard me and I got to express everything. Mm -hmm. So it's usually there's a nice arc of completion when you're doing this uh, mm -hmm. practice. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree with that. And you can also set a time like we're yeah. going to. So obviously for, for purposes of, of um, having this work for everyone, we're going to set a time. But you can also do that. And you can set a time that feels good. You can say, you know, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes each, whatever that might be. And you don't have to fill that time, but you can at least know that you have that period of time. So it's completely, and I also mm -hmm. completely agree with Dean that there's a natural arc um, of the experience. So great question. Thank you for asking that. Yeah. Any more questions? Let's get our time All right. Here. I think we're good. So great. So we're going to just do this. Yeah. So we're going to have time for just one experience in the breakout rooms. So you're going to have a choice of playing with an issue or a recent upset, if you would like, or you can talk about a potential, something exciting that you might be wanting to create in your life. You could play with the, an idea like plan a fantasy trip that you know might have to wait a while because of our uh, pandemic that's going on. But you can play with anything in the potential area. So we invite you to choose which one that you feel for yourself will be most supportive of, um, of your experience. So um, with that, what we're going to do is we're going to give you 10 minutes. So there's going to be two minutes where you're going to get put in the room and let yourself settle in. You can introduce yourself to each other. You can, um, there's going to, by the way, there's going to be three people in most of the rooms so that um, you, so you're going to take turns. And so you can choose amongst yourselves how, who's going to be the, who's, you're each going to have an experience of being listened to. So being a, 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 the expressor and you can take turns who's gonna be uh, tossing with, with them. Now in the, I'm gonna put in the chat, so you'll see the chat when you get in your room. I'm gonna put in the chat for the three sentences. So remember that these are the only three sentences <laughs> that the listener is going to use, no matter how tempted you feel. <laughs> and, and you can notice what's happening in your body if you're really feeling like you, I really need to fix, I really need to, I want to say something. Um, just check in with yourself and, and um, see if you can stay in the commitment to just use those sentences. Um, it's a great opportunity for learning. <laughs> so Deb, uh, whenever you're ready to create the rooms, then you can go ahead and do that. And again, if you're not going to join the room, you're welcome to stay in the main room. All right, yeah, here we go. Great. So I would love to hear a little bit about your experience. We have a few more minutes left of our call. And anyone who wants to share, just go ahead and raise your hand and love to hear from you. All right, Deborah. 
I see you. Uh, it's just, thank you. It's just interesting how, um, what, it's, what it feels like to hold on to the impulse to say appreciative and encouraging things, right? I mean, I didn't do it. It's, I, I cannot do it, but I noticed how much I want to do it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great noticing. Did you have a certain way of helping yourself not to do it? Um, I'm just really good at the rules of the game. Ah. <laughs> so, so it's like, Rule I just <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Nice. Thank you. And let's see, I see Violet raising her hand and Shelly. So let's go Violet and then Shelly and then anyone else that Deb might see. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. I loved when you guys were go doing it with the real ball and kind of, can it be more organic where you're not really like one person is strictly listening and one person is strictly sharing? Can it be just like used in a conversation to go deeper with each other? Well, I think that if you're, if you want to have a conversation where you're playing with a balloon or a ball, that would be different from doing the basic toss. So the point of the basic toss, it, it's a very specific practice. And what I would say is I'd recommend trying it out that way and like following the rules of it. Um, it's, it's highly effective. And, and so it's not to say that you can't bring part of the tool in and, and improvise, it's always great to do. But one of the things that I learned from Katie that I really appreciate that she would recommend when she was teaching tools is try it first a few times, give it, get, get, um, get it embodied at a certain level and then start to improvise and bring in your own ideas of how to use it. Um, that way you're, you're actually getting experience before you start improving. So does that make sense? Yeah, great. Great question. Thank you. And then I think it was yes, Shelly. Yeah. I, I just want to share that I had an insight with our group that uh, because we were timed, there was that natural curve that you and Dean talked about. And if there were more time, we each of us acknowledged that we could probably go on. And for me, the experience was introspective to say there is a natural feeling listened to and an end to that um, conversation that could occur if we had the structure. And if I were just allowed to go on, then I would just backtrack and like nothing more would be accomplished. I wouldn't feel more listened to or perhaps when I'm not feeling listened to, I'm continuing to go on and on and on to see if I can get that person to listen to me, right? So right. We, we share that experience. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Thank you. Thank you for that. It was really beautiful. Yeah. Now I saw one more hand. Um, go ahead. Who, Michelle, whoever that we was. have trend. If I have saying oh, that correctly. Oh, there we go. Yeah, trend. I knew I saw. Yeah. Okay. And this will be our last one and we're going to have to oh, wrap things is. up, but yeah. oh, hi. Oh, hi. Um, my name's Tunde. It's like Sunday, but with a D. It's a little hard to hear you. Is, is it your, oh, maybe? No. Is this a little bit better? Or that's maybe? better. Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is Tande. It's like Sunday, but with a T. Um, ah! I noticed with my partner that my um, my brain and my natural curiosity to poke at things, there were things that came up in their story that I wanted to ask specifically about. And it was really hard to resist that urge. And then with, because I did resist that urge, I heard other parts of the story that I'm certain we wouldn't have gotten to. So yeah. That yes. is wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's some of that space that opens up that I was talking about earlier. So you created space by doing that, by letting yourself. And one of the ways that I like to um, attend to those impulses that are coming up is actually check in with my breathing and let my breathing be my grounding or feel my feet on the ground and just remind myself like, okay, here I am. Mm -hmm. So, oh, well, thank yeah. you so much. So appreciate everyone um, joining us for this call. Thank, thank you so much. So much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Michelle and Dean. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.